welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Now the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram was founded by two scientists who were looking at the classification of stars and their uh, absolute magnitude. So they were trying to graphically represent a star's classification with its brightness to see if there was a pattern. And so what they did is they plotted on this axis, they plotted the star's classification of O, B, A, F, G, K and M, which means that this of course represents temperature, so the maximum of O is 50,000 and the minimum of M is sort of less than three, three and a half thousand, so I'm just going to put it at 3,000 here, okay, and they're going to look at the star's absolute magnitude, okay. And much like this, uh, they're going to plot it a little backwards. And what they do is they plot it from to minus 10, so the brightest thing in the sky, to one of the dimmest at plus 15. Okay. So, when they started plotting the stars, they started noticing trends. And the regions that I'm going to show you now are the trends that were seen. And they had a region around here. They had quite a big region around here, and they had quite a big region around here as well. When they started actually looking about what stage in the star's life they were, they noticed most of the stars were around this region, and they called it the main sequence. Okay. So these stars, any star that's along this track is called a main sequence stars. These stars here were in the M category, so they were quite red, but they were quite bright as well. So they were huge, which means that these here got the name of red giants. And down here, I've got something in the O category, so in the blue or the white category, but they're very, very dim. So these objects down here got known as white dwarfs. What was interesting about this is that as we look about stars and how they transgress, Hertzsprung and Russell realised that this not only could be used to map stars in a current state or work out what part of them, but we could actually look, work out what part of their life cycle they are in. So our sun has an absolute magnitude of about 4.52, which puts me approximately here. It's also about a G-class star, so it would be around about here, so this is our sun here. And our sun, what will happen is when it dies, and this is in a later video, it will become a red giant. So it will become an M-class star, but because it will swell up, it will get much brighter. <coughs> Once the outer layer, or the outer shell, is shed, I'm only left with my dense core, which is really super hot, which means I come back down to a white dwarf. So we actually use this idea of a main sequence star will become this red giant, and in some cases a red super giant, and then afterwards the core that remains will be right down here in the white dwarf, so the neutron stars, or of course a black hole, but a black hole would have no absolute magnitude at all because it wouldn't be able to see. So we can use this to try and track and predict what would happen to our stars. So that there is the basics of a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. In an exam, you may be asked to draw and label, okay, so be able to label the temperatures or the classifications, and also know that it goes from plus 15 to minus 10. You need to be able to draw this and be able to label the main sequence, the red giants and the white dwarfs, and also be able to track our sun from here up to the red giant and down to the white dwarfs. So that there is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram.